What? We already started. Yeah, that's what I was. <laughs> no. Yes. yes. Hello, welcome. You're supposed to do all this boo 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 You're the one that named well, it. Welcome to a visit with Nana and Papa. I'm Nana. I'm Papa. My name is Valerie. I'm Jim. And um, we're coming to you from a very cloudy Austin, Texas. It's been a little rainy and a little gloomy here of late. Which is quite all right because we need the water. Yeah, all the rain. Well, uh, the fish need that stuff, but uh, I've never fished in the middle of I-35, so it could pretty much limit itself to where the fish live, and I'd be all right with that. Just saying. You're funny. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> anyway. Um, this is going to be, I think, a short visit. Because <laughs> I don't have much to talk about in, in terms of actual knitting. There's only one really, one project that's kind of taken all of my attention. Yeah. Of late. And, um, and then, but I will talk a little bit about but some other stuff and he has some stuff to talk about we got packages in the mail to people this morning we did we made a trip to the post office so a uh, package going to arkansas but better late than never and, then, and you know the guy at the post office wasn't wearing a mask but if you're putting a just a, a little itty bit it's about that tall about that wide yeah it's the itty bitty package it's just a little bit bigger than their small priority mail package. It's about their medium, medium. Uh, you know, he wasn't wearing a mask and he wasn't holding a gun, but I do consider 50 freaking dollars to mail a package. Kind of highway robbery. Just saying. Uh, I don't see how the post office is going under when they're charging prices like that. Uh, must just be bad business decisions outside of charging 50 freaking dollars to mail a box. A little box. But it was worth it. It's worth it. It is. It, well, the person that's going to is worth it. I don't know if the postage is worth well, it, no, but the Verena post office is isn't worth it. worth it, but she's worth it. But anyway, okay. Now, if you all notice a difference, see? Well, my wife encouraged me to get a haircut. The way she encouraged me to get a haircut is, you look homeless. The words, you look homeless, kiss me, have never left the lips of a woman in my entire life. So when your wife says, you look homeless, that is your hint. Big hint. Get a haircut. And then I was going through my uh, birthday emails and I said, oh, look at this. Sports Clips giving me five bucks off from my MVP haircut for my birthday. Get your haircut. Was not a suggestion. There wasn't any, hey, baby, you think you might want to get a haircut? Get your haircut. <laughs> yes, ma'am. I will get that scheduled right now. It's, which I did. It looks so much better, though. But Sports Clips was having problems with their app. So I tried doing it online. Sports Clips was having problems with their online as well. I reloaded the app because it asked me to reload the app. It did not help. I went to the Sports Clips that I checked into. It's not the Sports Clips that I checked into. It's the Sports Clips I thought I checked into. And I get that, I'm like, why is my name not on your list? And like, we do not know. And I said, I got a text from you right here. It says, I'm next. I'm not next. I'm not even on there. And the manager, name her Jackie, came out and she, oh, you are checked in at Round Rock. This is not Round Rock. I said, this I know. I did not check into Round Rock. I checked into here because Round Rock is not where I wanted to go. I wanted to go here. He said, I will take care of you myself. I said, thank you. Very, very nice lady. Very professional because she's the manager. and She didn't just say, hey, one of you girls, take care of this guy. Nope. She said, I will do you myself. Good haircut. Very friendly. And she's always trying to sell me shit from my wife. She's like, does your wife mind this bald spot in the back? I said, no, she does not. <laughs> well, we have something you can put on that. And I said, that's okay. So I told her, you know, men who have a bald spot in the back are lovers. Men who have a bald spot in the front are lovers. Thinkers. Men who are bald from the front uh, are thinkers. Good, yes, baby. Thinkers. Men who are bald from the front 
to the back. Just think they're lovers. Still got hair in the middle, so I'm okay. What are you shaking your head for, Mr. <laughs> Fisher? <laughs> Not that you crack no, me up. Oh, now you're going to be all talking you're Easter You're funny. I love you. Uh, but if you are not a member of Sports Clips and you get your hair cut, uh, they are not really any more expensive than anybody else's haircut. But the MVP, they not only give you a haircut, they give you a hair shampoo. They give you a scalp massage. They give you a neck massage. And they cleaned up your beard in case your wife says you can't get a straight line. Well, Jackie got a straight line, so she is very happy with everything that Jackie did. Thank so, you, Jackie. So much better. Okay, back to your yarniness. We haven't even started my yarniness, but... Okay, okay. let's start your yarniness. <laughs> so, um, I, I was working on all the projects that we talked about last week. And the weather combined with the political climate of the country had me just really in a deep, dark place. So... I went into my yarn stash and I pulled out some yarn by Chelsea Lux Yarns. And if you don't know Christina's yarns, you're missing out. They're just gorgeous. But I had some on Chapel Hill Merino. Uh, well, I have some of her Merino too, but I had to do it. Instead of using the Merino with the mohair, I decided to use the mohair with some... La Vienname in Sienna. Yeah, this is the Sienna colorway. And this is the mohair. But when you put them together, magic happens. Strawberry rhubarb pie. He, yeah, he says it looks like strawberry rhubarb pie. And he is not, not off on that. Anyway, I... um. I want some strawberry rhubarb pie. I'm not using anybody's pattern. Um... I just, I cast on 100 stitches. I used a US 4 to do my ribbing. I then immediately did my short rows. And um, this is really important because I cannot remember who said this, but somebody said it either on a podcast or on there. Um, it might actually be... Tannis Lavalle, but I could be wrong. But somebody said something about short rows. And if you do your short rows and you go all the way to the end, and then you come back and you go down and you come back and you go down and you come back. In other words, if you're getting shorter every time, your short rows are visible in the actual fabric. But if instead, when you start at the beginning and you go the shortest distance and then come back to the shortest distance, and then you keep getting bigger and bigger. All of your short rows are literally in the seam of your ribbing. They are invisible. And I tried it for the first time in this pattern. And I am super happy because you can't see any of my wrapping turns in the fabric. Because they're up in here. So you mm. don't see them actually in the sweater. I think that's just really smart. Cool. I wouldn't see them anyhow because I wouldn't know what the hell I was looking at. <laughs> Well, there is that. There is that. And then um, I've just been increasing every so often. Um, I will say, as per normal, I struggle on the increase row. <laughs> but at least it's the increase row and not the entire yoke because that's why I fail at raglans because I struggle to remember the increases. So... My increase row may be increase rows. <laughs> I may mess up on the first one and then on the second one going around. I pick up the missed ones more than one time in this one. <laughs> well, once again, the words knit and shit sound alike because you could, she could be going knit, knit, but she's not. <laughs> Quite frequently. <laughs> and oh my God, when that stitch marker... Where did you put that little pink stitch? Okay, y'all, look at this. Does this look like the kind of yarn that you would use a pink stitch marker on? Hmm? Wait, wait, I'll What'd show you? you. Oh, she's going to dig it out. She's going to dig it out. This Here, is what was it. on that 
fabric. Just lay it on the fabric and let people see if they can find that. Can you find the stitch marker? We're well, playing a game. Can you find the stitch marker? Looky, looky, <laughs> looky, looky. See, there's sun gleaming off from it, so you can the without way, the <laughs> reflection. It's a god. Yeah, this this got pulled out. And it we disappeared put it like Harry Potter's uh, little. Cloak. We we took it out and we put a, a blue one in there. Ooh, speaking of Harry Potter's disappearing cloak, we've been watching this new show on Netflix. Uh, what is the, 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 the uh, Unstable? It's got Rob Lowe in it. If you like Rob Lowe from many years ago, you still Rob like Rob Lowe. If you didn't like him, you probably still not gonna like him because he's pretty much Rob Lowe. But he plays a genius, and he invented some special stuffs. I'm not going to give it away. And he's working on making more special stuffs. But his wife died. And it drove him off the deep end. Because his wife was his very best friend. So he has now become unstable. And in order for him to maintain control of the company that he started. And he's a billionaire. So people would like to take his company and rip him off. Uh, he needs to get stable. So they bring in his son. Who he has a really crappy relationship with. Because none of us would know anything about that. But uh, the show is about the re unstable relationship between this father and son and how they are making some tiny hedgerows and making bonds that didn't exist before. But it's also about uh, dealing with grief. But the reason that the Harry Potter cloak reminded me that is one of his pet projects is he is making a Harry Potter cloak and he's that close to being done. The only problem is, while he has made the cloak invisible and you throw the, throw the cloak on, you are invisible. You have to cut out eye holes so you can see through the cloak. And therefore, it is very weird and upsetting to people when they walk in and you're wearing the cloak and all they can see are eyeballs floating in space. So, uh, Harry Potter cloak. I would, I, if you have Netflix, check out Unstable. It's, uh, it's, very, fun. it's very funny. But it's also very poignant. Uh, it makes you think. I think it does. It, it actually makes you think. And it is funny. I, I really like the banter in the lab. It's pretty delightful. Yeah. Uh, I, I do like the... Uh, I like the whole cast. They, all of them have cast. different 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 things that make them I find it pleasant. Is delightful. We haven't seen the whole season. We've just watched a couple episodes so far. But as far as viewing of late... It's good. I, I enjoy it more than the other stuff we've been watching. Now, I got a question. This requires group participation, which means that y'all need to talk to us. Which means okay? comments down below. Yeah, well, yes. That, that's how that, they would talk back that's to us. That helps. I saw that there is a remake of Night Court. And it brought back some of Night Court's original cast, like John Larroquette. And Bernadette from uh, Sheldon. What's Sheldon's show? Um, Big Bang Theory. Uh, Bernadette, the uh, wife of the, the uh, engineer. I can't remember the, the, if it was. The, I don't do names. I am horrible uh, Anyway, names. Howard. Howard the, uh, Howard, the engineer's wife, Bernadette. Uh, she is the granddaughter of Harry Stone. It's a she. And she takes over at Night Court, the same court that her grandpa used to have. So it has an interesting premise. I have not watched any yet. So I'm asking any of you who may have already seen Night Court to tell us good, bad, worth a watch, avoid. Uh, it's not going to be the same because it can't be the same. I don't want it to be the same, but I would like it to be good. If it can't be good, it doesn't need to be. It's not unlike grandchildren. Grandchildren cannot be good and still be grandchildren. I, that's, that's, uh, Is that your rule? Yes. And, uh, as opposed to the be good or be gone. Well, I do not prefer that my grandchildren be good or be gone. I prefer that they just be good. <laughs> Oi. What's the matter, Bobby? My leg's going to sleep. Well, you want me to smack up and wake it up? <laughs> yeah. Wake up. Is it working? No, <laughs> I, love <you. laughs> I love you too. It's, uh... Anyway, 
Did it work? Can I get back to the sweater that I haven't finished answering or talking about? Oh, I thought you were done. <laughs> <laughs> Don't let me stop you. <laughs> so I am holding, because I'm holding Merino and um, Mahar silk together, I knit the ribbing in a US 4. And then the rest of the sweater, I'm using a US 8. It's not as loose as like a love note, but it's not as dense. I don't want a super dense, but I wanted it to be not as loose as this. So I'm going to see how I like it. So far, I like it a lot. I love, love, love the color. Um, I have, <clears throat> uh, Chelsea does not have this particular color in her um, colorways on her shop, but she does have some really epic colors in her shop and you can use um she does the duets which i really like but i'm finding that i really love her mohair silk with a neutral or solid or semi-solid i think it really makes the colors stand out um another glorious mohair silk that really vibrant uh, is vibrant it's um Oh, it's Diane, but why can I not think of Diane's name? Mm. Suburban Stitcher. I really like her yarns, her mohair silk as well. Um, yeah, and the Nidos Chagu. Pretty much if I'm knitting, odds are <laughs> it's Chagu Needles. Sometimes Knitter's Pride will sneak in there. I have some Knitter Pride um, double points, and I still have my Knitter's Pride interchangeables and I will use them from time to time. They're cubics. I like their metal cubic needles but I really like the cord on the Chowgu way better. Mm -hmm. So if Chowgu made some some square needles oh, that have would you, be like that would be like Nirvana with needles. Have you told Chowgu to do this? No because my voice is really quiet but who knows no, maybe. You told Chowgu that you thought chow goo would be ever so freaking delightful if they would make a crochet hook that would go on the end of their chow goo cords. And what did chow goo make and send you? Well, they didn't send it to me, but they didn't They make sent them. you the notice that they made them yes, so that you could did. go buy them. Of course, yes. now they, if you see, if she was an influencer, then they would have just sent them to her so she could hold them up. And, Look at what chow goo gave me. They gave me these neat, neat little crochet hooks. I don't think chow goo has hooks. ever given any needles to anyone. If they have, oh, I am sure it. they've given it to somebody. I've never seen it. But, but well, they're, do they're, you know everybody in the world that may have no, gotten a chow goo? I do not. I'm but I do pretty like sure chow goo does marketing like that. Anyway. Everybody does marketing like that. But hey, I'm, are you done? Are, you just, just, are we done with this? Are we, you know, yeah, I'm done with this. Wrap? You have a new... Talk no, I have. I got my own yarny shit to talk about. <laughs> Look at this. This is a sweater that my wife made me. And she's still telling me I need to learn how to knit. Why the hell do I need to learn how to knit? That's two of us consuming a bunch of expensive ass yarn. And anything I want, she can make better. Why would I want to knit? Because you might find it joyful. I find you joyful. And you knitting. might find knitting joyful. I find you joyful, and knitting makes you more joyful, so I enjoy you knitting. I do not need to come in and crush your jam. You knit, I'll wear. <laughs> um, that's good. But see, look at that. Is that not beautiful? Do you want to know she what made... the pattern is? Because I can't remember. I know who the designer is. You, well, the whole this designer made this shirt for me. She, well, she made the pattern. Because she made a different pattern. It was a, he, he, oh, he. No. This is um, Beatrice Rubio. Her store is called SambaKnits.com. She's also on Ravelry as Samba Knits. Um, but you keep this was originally a crew neck for women. No, it was a V-neck for women, but it's a V-neck with blousy no, sleeves. Yes, it was. It's a V-neck with blousy sleeves. It did not start out as a V-neck. It started out as a crew neck. No. And you no. said it, you are, my husband mm -hmm. would like that if it was a V-neck. No. You are mistaken, because I can get my pink sweater out, and it is a v-neck. You looked at that v-neck and went, if that didn't have those sleeves, and it went further down, I would wear that. The, the sleeves were ridiculous, okay? Why do you need sleeves that hang down to your belly button? You, you need to be able to move your arm in and scratch and nobody notice? It's a waste of yarn. That's what they are. 
Well, talk about your sweater. Well, I do. Do you remember the yarn? No. I remember it's like the... Okay, this was supposed to be a cable knit cardigan for me. Mm -hmm. But my beautiful has discovered that she does not like this color for cardigans because... Or for cable knits because the darkness of the color makes it very hard for her to see. It and wasn't just you that. lose the cardigan, no, you uh, you lose the cable knit, and the the darkness of the color. So you have to be really close. And apparently, we don't need anybody to get that close to me to be able to look at my... Does that have cable knits in it? Back the hell up. You don't want to smell? Go away. But since it's all wool, it doesn't smell. So, hey, you got that going for so, you. So, part of it is how dark the green is. But the other part and the reason I quit knitting it, because I even though it was dark, I, I was going to do it for you. I know. But this yarn is 50% merino and 50% bamboo. And that bamboo makes the yarn really slippery and slick. And I would drop at least eight cables every row. And then it would drop two or three rows. Three and then stitches. I would have to, yeah, eight cable stitches. But this cable over here, and this cable, and this cable, and then you would have to go down and pick it back up. And it was the slowest knit in the history of knitting. For those of us who don't knit, apparently picking up a cable stitch is a bigger pain in the ass than picking up a regular stitch. Significant. That's what I think. This is the name. This is the pattern the designer made, and it's called the Santiaguino. And... I had it and I lost it. Where did my Ravelry go? I don't know. I have not seen it. I, I will get back in there. Anyway, and the designer is Beatrice Rubio. Um, the yarn is Galileo from Knit Picks. And a very economical yarn. So if you're wanting to make a nice sweater, it's a great option. Um, I think I have a cardigan. I don't know if I do or not, but hold on while I, why okay. don't we talk while about While she books? is searching that, have, have any of you seen Avatar, The Way of Water? Oh, yeah. <coughs> uh, it is an excellent movie in 3D. Once again, James Cameron has done magical stuff with the uh, 3D camera and the, uh, computer generated goodness. Uh, so it's a long movie. I'll tell you that. I'll go up right up front. Uh, what I would recommend is to go see it the first time in 3D. So that you get the 3D experience. So if you wind up thinking, eh, it's not that great of a movie. Uh, you just don't go back. But at least you got to see all the really cool stuff in 3D. Uh, cheapest way to see it in 3D is to go to AMC and do the A-list. And then you've already paid for your whole month membership by getting a 3D ticket. So you might as well get the other 11 movies for free. And then you can see it again. And because it's a very long movie, you pick a part of the movie that you're going to remember right here. I got up and left the auditorium to go pee. So the next time that I watch this movie, I do not leave until I recognize the part from when I came back from peeing. I said, ah, right here is where I came back. Now I can go pee this time. Because it's still going to be a very long movie the second time you see it. This is the original pattern that I test knit for. And Jim really liked how the v-neck came out on the sweater. And he liked the shoulders. He just didn't like these sleeves. And, and he did not want a crop top. He okay, wanted yeah. to Y'all don't want to have this. This big white beach ball you don't want that sticking out from that crop top that's uh anybody that would find that attractive they, they really need counseling they should talk to somebody it's just they they do they don't want to see this i don't want them to see this valerie made a very nice sweater looks good i like it thank you bubby but anyway avatar really good movie uh very long didn't need to be quite that long uh, brings back some of uh, the old story uh, rehashed, but uh, it, it reinforces the same story from the first story that uh, white people are greedy because they are. And if there is an indigenous 
race that is sitting on something that white people value, they will do their best to get rid of the indigenous people so they can take whatever they have of value without actually compensating them for it. Not that that's ever happened in the history of, of the world, but, you know, for those of you who are history buffs and actually know, it happens everywhere, all the time, uh, all the time. Anyway, uh, are you back? Yeah, I was going to show. Um, oh, are you wanna... Did you get your rivalry all done? And you... Yeah, I have. Um, I showed that. I was going to show. What? I want to talk about... Projects that maybe you really want to have, but maybe you don't really want to knit, so you really want to watch somebody else knit. <laughs> <laughs> watching somebody else knit is like well, no, watching. I'm just, I'm just saying, like, I cannot be the only knitter out there that has these projects that are, oh, that's so good. But then the thought of knitting it goes, mm, maybe it's not that good. <laughs> Well, you know, I can't say anything about watching people knit because uh, for the last, what, 40 years at least, there have been fishing shows where guys who fish don't go fishing. They just sit at home and watch somebody else go fishing. Yeah, I can't watch those. But I can. I know you can. But that's because, you know what they do with those shows? They eliminate 90% of fishing. And they, they only show the catching. But I don't mind waiting. That's the, my favorite part of fishing. So this shawl is the... I, I can't say it right, so I'm just going to bring it over to the the title. See that title? B-J-A-Y-Z-L. That's the name of the title. Um, the designer for this is actually a designer that worked on Star Trek The Next Generation, I think. Or no... The more recent Star Treks, but she is a costume designer and she designed this shawl. And I just think it's stunning. And um, the the one that really um, stood out for me is, if y'all watch Fiber Chats, um, the girl from Fiber Chat, who is killing me that I can't think of her name at the moment, but she uh, made this one. And I just think it's just stunning. And so I want to own it, but I just don't know. Well, okay, those that know me know that shawls in me. It's just not really a good shawl knitting in me. Not so much. She successful. likes to wear shawls. She does not like to knit shawls. Yeah, so it, it becomes a, a bit of a struggle. But speaking of new Star Treks, Wait, before we, before we go there, yeah. I just want to say, in the comments below, I would love to see what you want to knit. Or if not, if you don't want to put it there, I'm going to try and do a group on Ravelry for a visit with Nana and Papa. And then I'll put a thread in there for, I don't know, um, what should we call it? Um, dream Knitting? I don't know. I know that I used to watch a podcaster. She doesn't podcast anymore. And she would do it. Um, it was called something knitting. Something when it was um, virtually or you know what I mean? Like somebody else is knitting for you. Vicarious. Vicariously knitting. Yeah, and, I remember that one. And, um, and so she would have like vicariously. These are the knits that I really like that somebody else made or somebody else is thinking about. So if you have those knits that you're like, mm, I would love to see that. I don't want to make it, but I want to own it. But, you know, I think we should share those. I miss having those, so I'm going to share them. So my first is the Vizha. However you say that, Shaw. Mm. Now you can talk about Star Trek. Okay. We got, uh, what was that? Um, if you do the Walmart, Walmart Plus where for 98 bucks a year you get free delivery on your groceries and free delivery on your free shipping from Walmart and you get uh, Paramount Plus for free. You have to watch the commercials. Guess what? If you had regular cable TV, you'd still have to watch the commercials. So, no big deal. That it's free. But we got Paramount Plus for free. And guess what we discovered on Paramount Plus? Picard. 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 Who cares? But we found all the new Star Treks. Picard. 
Anyway, we found some good Star Treks besides Picard. And there's, there's a new Star Trek. It's only got one season so far. That is a spinoff of the original captain of the Enterprise, Christopher Pike. It's an excellent, excellent uh, Star Trek. And I did really enjoy that. This is the career of Christopher Pike right up to the point in time where he has the explosion that mangles him and turns him into the Christopher Pike that is on the K the Star Trek version where they take him back to the planet with the people with the big heads and have the ability to make you believe that uh, you are no longer a cripple and on a chair that uh, something illusions or whatever. Um. But uh, if you get the opportunity, check out uh, the Christopher Pike version of Star Trek, whatever that one is, and the one where they get blasted into the future. I forget what the name of that one is, but uh, it's not Voyager, is it? I don't know. We'll Discovery. Put Discovery. Star, Star we'll, Trek Discovery. We'll put them down below. We watched all of Star Trek Discovery until we ran out, and now we are waiting for them to finish production because I hate when they don't have everything ready for me, you know? But I'm loving Picard. I really do love it. I know you don't, but I did. I'm enjoying it. And I haven't seen it yet, but... Jordy is on there and he's on there with his daughter and I'm excited for that episode. I understand that this last the, this last season is the last season of Picard. Thank God. So, hey, hey, hey. Hey, hey, hey. Watch hey. it. Anyway, this last season they are bringing back all of the Star Trek The Next Generation cast to be on Star Trek Picard for the last season. So I'm not sure how they are doing that because not all of them are alive. But those who are still alive will participate unless they're not invited. And you know how that goes. Sometimes you just don't get invited. What are we on to? Oh, when you want to talk about books and the right, books. But are... can, I, can I go with another project? Sure. Okay. So my next it is your knitting thing. Well, I have a whole bunch of other stuff to talk about too, but oh. my next one is the Trimax shawl. And I'm gonna go ahead and try and bring it up. Bear with me. It's again. It's a blank screen of death. It's coming. Give it a minute. This is the Trimac. It's by Rastus who Sue H S U. Uh, he's on Ravelry and on Instagram, but his Instagram will be noted down below. It's Rastus0226, I think. Excellent Instagram handle, but I'm going to see if I can get this to zoom in a little bit. Is that not just the most stunning texture ever? I just think it's so cool. Anyway. Who was that designer that made the uh, Star Trek shawl? Had just all the little Star Trek communicators? Oh yeah, that's in my in my um, dreaming. Um, she's a designer of color, person of color. Hold on, it's in my. I'll, I'll bring it up. You talk about your next show. <laughs> um, okay, Raising Dion is a show on Netflix, and the premise of the show is there is a special meteorological event that happened in Iceland. And all kinds of groupies and scientific people went to Iceland to see this happen. It was a comet that was going to be coming very close to Earth. Well, it comes very close to Earth. And when it comes very close to Earth, some weird stuff happens in Iceland. And all the people who are at the closest point, uh, they get contaminated by this thing. And everybody but one get good stuff. And they get some kind of special abilities that can make plants grow. They can heal people. Just assorted good stuff. And one guy, one guy who didn't want to participate in going out and being a part of everything because he was a little jerk off, decided that he didn't, no, I don't want to go. So he stayed inside. Well, apparently having something filter the good stuff from the outside, that's only the bad stuff come in. And he got contaminated with bad stuff that is burning him up and eating him alive. That's the premise. Now, flash forward into the future. The son of one of these people from Iceland, his name is Dion. 
and he has inherited his abilities from his father and he can move things with his mind. He's five. Imagine what a pain in the ass your kids were when they were five, okay? Now think about your kids at five and being telekinetic. Yeah. Anyway. So, so you like that show. That's a good show. But when season two came out, the very first show, Valerie and I were like, mm. and we decided not to watch it anymore. And then I got done watching everything that was available. I said, yeah, okay, I'll give it one more shot. And I watched the second episode. I'm like, oh, that's not so bad. And then I watched the third episode. And she walked in on me while I'm watching. Is that raising Dion? I said, yes, it is. I said, really? And she was standing behind me watching. And she's standing behind me watching. And I said, you know, you could sit down. I said, I could. So I grabbed my knitting and I watched. And my... It's not mine. I don't... No, it's not. It's not that. I just... There's enough really nasty happening in the world right now. And I mean, in the United States alone, there's so much negative stuff happening. I just don't even know. I feel like... We're one of those people in Germany in 1936 and 37 going, what the hell? What well, I don't know what to do. I'm scared. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. And yeah, we, we don't have to look any anyway, farther in America for so nasty shit. I just don't. I find it really dark and negative and not a lot of light. So it's just not it's not that it's a bad show. I just don't want to add to the darkness that's in my world right now. Is that fair? It is fair. Um, you asked about this shawl, so before I forget, this is the Far Point Shawl, which, hey, if anyone out there, like, wanted to knit this, oh, not that one. <laughs> and now it's went away, but if you, if you felt like knitting the Far Point by, now I've lost... I just had it. What in the world? Hold on. It's the Far Point Shawl. And Vanessa Smith is a designer. And I own the pattern. I just really don't want to knit the shawl. But anyway, if you want to knit the shawl and we can trade and I'll make you a sweater and you make me the shawl, I would totes do that in a heartbeat. Anyway... Um, yeah, I, I love, love, love Star Trek, and this design is pretty epic. Um, can we really quick talk a little bit about some charitable stuff going on in the community? Would that be all right? Yeah. Okay, so... The first one, because I, I want to, I'm going to go in order so I don't forget. The first one is currently, I follow Gary Knits, Gary Rides, and he's doing a knit along right now. Mm -hmm. But I, and I'm it's participating, over, but it it's almost over, yeah. And then there'll be a new one that starts in June, June 1st, and it goes through the end of July. But you got to have time to get your yarn if you're going to buy a new yarn for it. I'm not, I'm going to use Stash. Polish the halo. Anyway, I'm going to use stash. But he's going to have a knit a knit um shawl, a knit hat, and a crochet shawl. You want to see the shawl? Sure. Okay, give me one second. I, um, I'm going to make, or not a shawl, it's a crochet sweater, a cardigan. And I'm going to make the crochet cardigan. Oh, you are? Mm-hmm. And didn't we look at that and I said, is that not just foolishly long and you probably doesn't have to be that long? Yeah, I'm not going to make it that long. Okay. I'm going to make it shorter. Okay. Um, but I think it's really pretty and I think that it, I would wear it, especially here. That's one of the pictures. It's a crocheted cardigan i'm gonna do short sleeves it has an option for long sleeves and it has an option for like in between sleeves um and it has an option for short middle and almost like a duster length and it's all dependent on because you knit it from the bottom up 
or crochet it from the bottom up and then you split for the sleeves and then you knit further up and then you join it and I'm super excited um, about making it and I want y'all's opinion on color so for this charitable thing in July I was thinking blue and then I could use the cone there would be plenty I can hold this double which would meet gauge what do you think about a blue cardigan for me it go with your eyes I would like it so I love you. I love you too. Um, so that's what I'm thinking. I'm gonna use my whole super soft. This is whole scarn, um, a really economical yarn that I love knitting with. Your reason she loves knitting, knitting with it is it's not slippery and it doesn't fall off the needles. And if it does, it just holds on to itself and doesn't go. It just stays right where it is. There's no drop stitches. Whereas if you have bamboo, and you let bamboo loose, letting bamboo loose is like letting kindergartners out without a teacher. Gone. Okay, and so that that's the pattern for the crochet. The knitting pattern has not been released yet. The, the, the difference but, between knitting a cro and crocheting a sweater is probably two skeins of yarn. So I'm a fan of knitting. But I haven't crocheted anything in a really... Well, I've been just a few things recently, and I mm -hmm. used to crochet... All the time. I know. And so we I'm, used to buy... Okay, I was at work one day. And like, you know, credit card fraud. They they worry about things when shit happens. And they're like, did you buy that? And I'm at work and I get a phone call. And this is the fraud hotline for my credit card. They want to know if I just spent $500 on yarn. I said... <coughs> How much did I spend on yarn? I said, five hundred dollars. Was that you? I said, close enough. <laughs> okay, thank you. For which I hang up from them, and I call up my wife, and I ask my wife, "Why the hell do you need five hundred dollars worth of yarn?" Well, it wasn't all for me. <laughs> so now I'm buying yarn for other women. I was I, no, no, you weren't. Yes, I was. No, you weren't. You were buying this oh, yarn no, for was, all these other women who live went. in countries where they can't get this yarn because there is a trade embargo and it's against the law. And she's going to buy this yarn for them and then she sends it to them. But it was, no, that was and not. Then, but, that but, was no, not. No, but don't worry because they pay me back. I have you know that they pay her back on PayPal, and there was never, ever a time in the existence of PayPal and my credit card that those two talked to each other from PayPal talking to my credit card. They talked from my credit card talking to PayPal, but PayPal never had a good thing to say to my credit card. So, whether these women in foreign countries that were not legally supposed to have this yarn... In, they were not They were. In, no. They were. Don't they listen to her. Not. She's making shit up. This is I, a fact. That is not what happened. Okay, fine. It's not what there happened. There were it's a not bunch what of us that were in a crochet group, and it, they had a minimum purchase, and so I would make the minimum purchases. But the $500, I guarantee you, was when I had my business, because I used to buy yarn, and it was a minimum of $500 from the manufacturer, because it was or from the wholesale distributor. But yes, I made many large purchases... Of yarn from yes, a company that had, you could only get, you had to do a minimum. And so we would all go together and then they would pay me. But yes, they would pay my PayPal and I would not necessarily. <laughs> not <lose>. necessarily. <laughs> Don't go there. Not ever. Not not necessarily. Not ever. Those funds might have been spent to buy other yarns for me <laughs> or other things for me. <laughs> okay. Those funds... Either went to buy yarn, crochet hooks, or knitting needles. Or spinning stuff. I got spinning well, fiber. Went, yeah. See? I all, bought she had, she had all these wonderful friends. Very good friends. They loved her. They cared for her. They spin. And they bought her a spinning wheel. Because while they love her, they hated me. They did not Because you know you. what? A spinning wheel is an entryway drug. You can't spin a spinning wheel... 
without shit to spin on it. And well, we started off with just this little, oh, I could buy this roving and try this. Oh, I like this. And then, well, I could buy a lot of roving. And then somebody would go, ah. huh? That's roving for making yarn. Because you can't buy yarn? Well, I can, but I can make yarn too. It's a skill. It's a survival skill. Oh, there's a way to pass it off to your husband. You know, if the world comes to an end, and the fact that I know how to spin yarn, okay, I'll buy that. That's a, that is a valid, okay, fine. And then next, well, you know, you can buy roving, or you can buy a comb and a carter, and all this other Hackle. oh i'm not going there just just you can buy all the paraphernalia needed for your drug habit and then you can start buying fleece yep and process the fleece and, and, and process that fleece. The and then you have a whole new world to bitch about yeah. because now oh this oh that's really ah what well, they didn't even clean this animal before they sheared it. It still has shit on it. What do you what do you, have? you need to know that not all ranchers do this. Most reputable farmers who sell their fleece skirt it first. And skirting it, you pull the stuff that's wrapped around the britches. Because it has all the dirt, plus it's not a very good fiber. And they pull all the fiber that isn't worth spinning, and they separate it, and they send you the good usable. They remove any second cuts. And how do you find these reputable people? You buy a lot of butt fleece. That's how you can find the or reputable. You, or you go to festivals like Maryland Sheep and Wool. Yeah, but you didn't go to any of these festivals. No, so I did it You just bought butt I lived fleece. In Wyoming. <laughs> you bought butt fleece, and then was bitched about it. And then, I did. Then we'd have... Would have entire fleeces off from animals, and she don't even want to deal with this shit because it's got shit. It's up. It, well, there's there still some, some good them, stuff, but there's a lot of there butt fleece in there. There were some that were just horrible. They were. They were just literally when, not. When you can lift a fleece up and you see dingleberries of whatever animals, fecal matter that is, that makes your husband want to find out where you bought this shit because he might just go and. Anyway, Show them but some that, shearing. It was many, many, and there many wouldn't be any ago. butt fleece in that unless they're butt heads. Because <laughs> if they're butt heads, then it will be a butt fleece. Because I will shave their head and say, "Knit this, bitch." <laughs> anyway. Anyway, I don't like people selling stuff that they know is crap and contains crap and selling it as if it was the Taj Mahal of all yarn. Yeah, I had, I did have the worst. You bought yarn that worst, had crap in it. No, the worst purchase I had was I purchased some hand dyed locks <laughs> from a very reputable, still in business dyer, and I got them, and they were felted, and they were felted with the fecal matter still in them. So it was locks and shit literal shit in with the hand dyed locks that I had to wash and wash and wash and wash to get all of the crap out of them and then I had to fight to unfelt them <laughs> I was gonna say the problem with washing is felting no I didn't I I literally just soaked them soaked them drained them soaked them drained them yeah but soaked even them, that causes them. felting and I you... just, I, it was so awful. I ended up, I think I spun up maybe two ounces. I bought an entire pound and paid way too much for it and threw it in the garbage because it was just worthless. You see, I don't understand. It was depressing. I've never purchased from them again. Felting is kind of a curious thing because sheep are made out of wool. You know, the whole outside of a sheep is wool. Mm -hmm. And sheep run around and they do shit, and the wool rubbers, 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 rubbers. And sheep, when they get a drink of water, they got to wade out into the water until they can stick their head down to get a drink. Yes. And that means, oh, this, oh, this gets wet. Mm -hmm. And then they rub it, rub it, rub it, rub it. How come they're all, you know, all felted together so some that of, they... Some of, depending on where it's at on a, on a sheep, and depending on the type of breed it is, some of it may felt, but typically... Felting needs water, and it needs heat, 
and it needs some kind of lubricant. So typically when you felt the best is when you're using a soapy water, because like Dawn soap, because then it's lubricating and then it's so causing them to get wet anyway. sheep has lanolin on its wool yeah, so in it the could, summertime and it's, it's waka waka waka. I'm so just saying some it should be like will. locked then, in the place because its armpits are all felted. I can't freaking But then move. there's uh, also uh, some uh, some uh, sheep don't felt. Their wool won't felt ever. No matter what you do, it does not felt. Uh, those and are then, good sheep. Well, no. Well, I mean, <laughs> depends on what you're after. But felted, not felted yarn. Felted hmm. wool is a good fiber. I mean, if you take in felt wool into a fabric, that fabric it will hold so nice up coats. forever. Well, I think my coats were but, woven and then felted. But anyway, back to. Back to what? Oh, back okay. to. I we've, still have. I still have some. Non. Some. We've watched two seasons of Knife we'll or come Death. Back to that. You keep interrupting. I'm sorry, but I really want to. Get so, go go. So we go, have go, the go. end aids cow in pri the pride one with this sweater that is crocheted and fully spun is the name of the website. It's fullyspun.com and one of their products is a kit for that sweater. If you purchase the kit, a portion of the funds for the kit gets donated back to the um, end aids fundraiser that Gary is doing. So you can buy the pattern, you can buy the kit, and if you're um, and then there's a ticket on Gary's Kofi that if you purchase the ticket, you can do just the ticket and the pattern and crochet the pattern. Or you can do the same thing, the ticket and get the knit pattern that he's going to have. Or you can get the ticket and do the knit pattern. And all of those you can use your own yarn. However, there is a dyer that will be providing yarn kits for the knit projects um but that yarn is going to be this time sold directly from gary himself which i hear is stunning and epic so i'm excited it's supposed to be coming out next couple weeks so we'll see next next one because i don't want to forget these and we're already running really longer than i intended but, um, <laughs> yes i know oh it'd be Lo short <laughs> lola bean yarn company is she does a uh, fundraiser every quarter and has for years and raised amazing amounts of money for lots of charities organizations that really needed it um and magpie fibers thank you magpie Finally convinced Lola, I mean Adela for Lola Bean Yarn Company to make this quarter be all about Adela and let's help her get into a commercial facility. Let's help her get her dream of being able to have a facility where she can have events and teachers and bring people in and have um, scholarships where travel to the event and payment for the event is covered by scholarships so people who would never be able to go to events can go mm -hmm. I just I think it's amazing and that's been her dream for a long time and we're helping her make it a reality so you can go to uh, the GoFundMe it's linked below or you can go to Magpie Fibers and um, Follow them on Instagram. They're going to be having some events in this quarter that are going to also raise money. And uh, Adela is going to be doing some things, raising some money as well. But if you can't really, I think the community needs this. I think it's just, and she has done so much. I know she is the one who shared about Gary's. Um, knit alongs mm -hmm. that introduced me to Gary and because of that I now have a friend and his sister is now my friend win-win for me and all because of Adela but she also has introduced other people I've been following Treehouse Knits which you already know that I follow <laughs> Treehouse Knits but I first bought from her quite some time ago when I first found her on um, Etsy but 
she did a cocoa collection and Adela shared that cocoa collection and her business went from her doing it out of her home to her having her own studio and now having two employees. Um, she's just really helped a lot, a lot of businesses and always looking out for everyone else. And I just think it's time we, we look out for them. That is nice. All right. I'm going to turn it over to you for the next topic. Uh, just a quick uh, this is how it is. Okay, let's see if you can see it. You see that? That is 18 count of eggs for 339. That's amazing. That's almost being given away by today's egg standards. You know why? Because this is Easter weekend. And everybody reads the circular and says, Holy shit, 339 for 18 eggs? Let's go. Get in the car now. And then they get there and they find out they haven't got any of those. What they have left in stock are these 10.99 of the 18 count eggs. They got a shitload of those. Because apparently the manufacturers, chickens, that do the 10.99 eggs, they have been very prolific. Whereas the manufacturers, chickens, same chickens, that make the 339 eggs, they are lazy asses. And they have not been very busy. Anyway. So. I love you. Is that, that's bait and switch. 339, 18 count. Get there. 1099, 18 count. You didn't see. Uh, well, that's it. It's anyway, supply and demand. I'm going to go back to nonprofits and caring and saving and, and well, helping I others. I could talk about donated. Well, wait, I know. Can I finish this real quick? Go donated. Okay. So. I don't know if I'm going to be able to, but I did sign up and now I realize I'm working. So if I can find someone to cover my shift, I will be there. And if not, I'm still going to try and help raise money. So Gary's ride for AIDS is in June and Austin's ride is in April, which is really good because it's way too hot in June here to ride your bike anywhere. Um, There's people who do it. I know, but it ain't way too hot. But... The Hill Country Ride for AIDS, the link is down below. So if you have a little bit of money that you can swing, just pop into my um, my attempt to raise money for that. That would be awesome. And then Knit the Rainbow is doing a spring drive fundraiser. Um, I think they're really trying to get Knit the Rainbow off the, and running in Chicago. And I think that's really important because Chicago has just as much cold weather as New York, if not more cold weather than New York. And then it's a um, different kind of cold weather than New York. And that link is also below. And always be kind yarn. She is a delight and she started their yarn company because her daughter committed suicide. And she decided to take her daughter's love for color and join it with her love for knitting and Every, she donates money every month or quarter, I don't know, but to um, ending suicide, suicide pre prevention. And her and her husband are going through a tough time right now because their dog ended up, even though it's not very old, has a heart condition that the doctors just found. And so I didn't even know there is this, but apparently there's cardiologists for dogs and... If there's a way to make money, men will do it. <laughs> anyway, and so her me the medical bills for their pup are a lot higher than anyone would ever intend to have medical bills for a pup. And so she is doing a raffle, and I think, I'm hoping this will go up in time for you to pop over and get a ticket. I think she's giving away some gift cards and some other things, and the tickets are only five bucks. So that's to help her. And also she has everything in her shop at 30% off trying to help her and her husband get through this financial overwhelm. And we all love for furry four-legged people. Yeah. I had to go see my doctor for my annual. This is kind of turned into a semi-annual because I'm not the healthiest cat. But uh, Dr. Passapaletti, a very nice lady, uh, very sympathetic, very kind. Uh, it's wonderful. Got a bunch of th things she wants me to, to take care of because uh, 
if I intend to live any longer than next week, I probably should look into them. My wife would like me to live longer than next week, so I will look into them. But while Dr. Passapalini and I were, were visiting and discussing things, uh, we, were, we discussed cancer. And this beautiful, wonderful, kind soul wholeheartedly believed that the people were actually trying to find a cure for cancer. And I, I, I think I broke her heart because I said, there will never, ever come a day that there is a cure for cancer because the treatment of cancer is a multi-billion dollar industry and if you could actually cure cancer then all of these people doing oncology would have no jobs all the people selling chemo making chemo administering chemo all the people doing radiation all of that stuff would go away because now there is a cure for cancer i still hope you're wrong and that and, she's right and, and, and she she almost teared up when she said I never thought of it that way. I said, human nature. Humans are evil, and they like money. There's more money in the treatment of cancer than there is in the cure of cancer, so they won't cure cancer. They'll do things to make sure cancer can last as long as possible, because the longer they can bill your insurance company or your dependents, uh, they'll, they'll run that right into the ground. <laughs> And they may bury you, but your bill doesn't bury with you. So, uh, but thank you, Dr. Passapoletti, for being my doctor for the last eight years. Uh, you've been a wonderful doctor. Thank you. She's now Valerie's doctor, too. She's pretty awesome. And right. she likes my wife more than she likes me. And she just met my wife, which could be possible because she's had more exposure to me. Um, my next dream or vicarious knitting Beachcomber by Tiff Nealon. This I will make. Because this I will wear in Austin. Um, I just want to know what you guys think. Because I'm thinking this yarn. What do you think, James? I have enough. You do? Mm -hmm. I have three of them. Are you still going to use the uh, coppery? No. Uh, I don't know. Maybe. I, see, I have this. I'll show you what he's he's questioning. I have these. So using this one for the main one and this one for the neckband and the sleeve cap or sleeve ribbing and the and for the bottom ribbing. So maybe. What do y'all think? I'm curious because this one I want to wear. I sure and I I knit her stripes of joy and I love her pattern. So. Definitely want another Tiff Nealon on the needle soon. Now, I've been telling you all about Night for Death. And Night for Death is a spinoff from Forged in Fire. Uh, and we, I've seen two seasons of it now. And I had the same issue with uh, it as I have with Forged in Fire. They're always chopping up meat. Forged in Fire, they're chopping up whole pigs and stuff. But they're always chopping up meat. Now, uh... Knife of Death, they chop up meat and vegetables. So, you know, they're, they're equal opportunity slashers there. But I'm like, you know, they waste an awful lot of food. So I did some research because I do not like people who waste food. That that bothers me. Uh, I got the shit slapped out of me all my growing up over them starving kids in Africa. I worry about them. So I don't like wasting food. <laughs> well, I did. <laughs> you didn't guess me. And any time I did not want to eat whatever was on my plate, there's starving kids in Africa no, would love I did to the have same that. Thing, but I, 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 you, I really, <laughs> you really want to get whacked a good one, just tell them they can send them yours. And you will uh, get a beating you don't want to think back on, but it's there because it's indelibly pounded into your ass. Anyway. So uh, grateful we don't raise kids that way anymore. Anyway. Oh, well, some ahead. people still do. Well, I don't I like it. I tried to think about it. Uh, I found out, I did some research, and it turns out that both of those shows, Forged in Fire and uh, Knife Store Death, donate all of the food used. Uh, they clean it up, and it either goes to zoos or farms or places that can actually use it. And if the meat is still good meat, they cook it up and feed it to the crew. 
the cast and crew uh, have barbecued pork or barbecued beef or whatever. Uh, it didn't get that dirty. Hose it off. Put it on the grill. <laughs> And I think, I think that's why Valerie's noted, it's always cold. These guys are always wearing coats and bundled up. It's always cold when they're doing knife or death. Yeah, I think they keep it cold so that the meat don't spoil. Because you got this big ass rack of ribs. That's true. I cut through that. Now I got two big ass, okay, two not as big rack of ribs. I can grill them and we can have ribs. Or we can let it get too hot in here and we can have to give those to the zoo and the lions can have ribs. I'm not okay. saying any, I got anything against lions, but if I was going to have ribs or the lions are going to have ribs, I don't want to have ribs. I like ribs. Okay. Ribs don't like me, but I like ribs. We have one more thing on your thing that I brought up that you haven't brought up. That, that? I'm going to bring up. Oh, I Thomas. Um. I don't like scary books or scary movies or I don't do, um, yeah, me too. I don't do, um, any kind of horror flicks, whatever. And you would think that I wouldn't like Odd Thomas, but I love the books of Odd Thomas. The first one. I laughed and I cried and I. So, Odd Thomas is a book by Dean Kuntz. Thank you, Chris. It was in my. I could see it, but I couldn't. It had me. Um, and it's brilliant. It is just brilliant. And book two, if if my memory serves me correctly, it's book two. Starts with one of my favorite lines ever. Life is just a parade of fools, and I am at the front twirling my baton. And just some epically brilliant writing with a character that is forgettable and unforgettable all at the same time. Yep. Now, just, I don't want to give away any of the deets on yep. on it because I don't want to spoil it. But if you <coughs> if you like reading. It is not, it's, it's a mystery, I guess, but it's a mystery with a little bit of doo 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 doo. That's all, I'm just going to say, it's not actually Twilight Zone, but you know, some, I don't. Oh, you can give a little bit. Okay. I don't Odd know, Thomas. I don't know. I feel like that's something that if you don't know, that makes the book even better. Okay. So I just think we won't give away any, but if you're not okay with something that's a little out there, then you're probably not going to be okay with the book. But if you have an open mind and don't mind reading things that are out there a little, which I think most of Dean Koontz's books are... Every bit of Dean Koontz's are books are out there. A little out there somewhere with some mystery thrown in. So it's a mystery with a little out there, like stretching the envelope of reality. But the great but not, thing about Dean Koontz is every bit of his out there, he's researched. Yeah, it's so he good. He actually researches... He did a book about a guy that had xenophobia. He's allergic to sunlight. And prior to Odd Thomas, he was the only character that had two books written about him. Dean Koontz, for 30 years, never wrote sequels. He didn't write series. Uh, he he didn't even write sequels. To, he wasn't and going to with Odd, but anybody who's ever Odd read Odd, had, you couldn't get enough of Odd. Odd had such a fan yes. base mm -hmm. and... Dean Kuntz discovered that he hadn't actually told all of the story that Odd Thomas had to tell. And he wrote another book. And then, and, and then he found out that he still hadn't told all of Odd's story. And he kept writing books until he finished telling Odd's story. It's so good. It's just so good. So if you get, they I just made, want to say, if you get, if you get a chance to read it, it's worth the read. 